You are the face of God. I hold you in my heart. You are a part of me. You are the face of God. You are the face of God. I hold you in my heart. You are a part of me. You are the face of God. You are the face of God. Tu es l'image de Dieu. I hold you in my heart. Tu es l'image de l'amour. You are a part of me. You are the face of God. You are the face of God to say la luce di Dio I hold you in my heart to say il volto dell'amore You are a part of me You are the face of God You are the face you are the face of love I hold You are the face of God I hold you in my heart You are a part of me You are the face of God You are the face of God I hold you in my heart You are a part of me. You are the face of God. 
Good morning, and welcome to Spiritual Life Center, a church that love is building. can feel God's mighty power and God's grace. I can hear the brush of angels' wings. I see glory on each face. Surely the presence of the Lord is in this place. Let us open with prayer. Dear God, the writer of Proverbs tells us, happy is the one who finds wisdom and the one who gains understanding. For the gain from that is better than the gain from silver and its profit better than gold. Her ways are ways of pleasantness and all her paths are peace. She is a tree of life to those who lay hold of her. Those who hold her fast are called happy. Loving Spirit, we come together this morning and we ask to be lifted into an awareness of the truth of your presence and power in the world and in our lives. We seek a whole new dimension of spiritual understanding and ask that its golden realm bring each of us and our loved ones and all peoples into that promised land of pleasantness and peace and harmony. And so it is. Amen. There is a candle in every soul, some brightly burning, some dark and cold. There is a spirit who brings the fire, ignites the candle and makes his home. Carry your candle, run to the darkness, seek out the hopeless, confused and torn. Hold out your candle for all to see it. Take your candle and go light your world. Take your candle and go light your world. Frustrated brother, see how he's tried to light his own candle some other way. See now your sister, she's been robbed and lied to, still holds a candle without a flame. Carry your candle, run to the darkness, seek out the lonely, the tired and worn. Hold out your candle for all to see it. Take your candle and go light your world. Take your candle and go light your world. We are a family whose hearts are blazing. So let's raise our candles and light up the sky. Praying to our Father in the name of Jesus. Make us a beacon in darkest times. Carry your candle, run to the darkness. Seek out the helpless, deceived and poor. Hold out your candle for all to see it. Take your candle and go light your world. 
In the book of Matthew, chapter 5, verse 14 to 16, you are the light of the world. Let your light shine before others so that others may see your good works and give glory to your Father in heaven. You who are the light of the world, let us join together as we pray, as we sing, as we give our hearts to God this morning. My mind is now open and my heart receptive. My mind is open to God's light and understanding. This light, it surrounds me and it enfolds me. It permeates every cell of my body. The understanding that I am a child of God is now coming alive, both in me and in my life. With it comes the feeling of uncertainty and that my destiny will always be secure. As the child of a perfect parent, and I am loved and cherished and cared for. My mistakes have never separated me from this love. Oh God, in this hour, I'm ready to set aside any feelings of despondency, despair, depression, or worry. These things have no place in my life, for I am your child unfolding, and I choose love. I choose faith. I choose to believe I am a miracle in the making. My heart is receptive to love, to happiness, to the peace that passes all understanding. And I take that feeling into my being in the silence, in the silence. I bring my focus back to this room and as I do, I remain consciously aware that your nature in me, the Christ self in me, is pure and perfect and it cannot fail. I believe in miracles. I believe in God in action all around me. Miracles are happening to me because I believe in them. I reach for them, I reach beyond myself my smaller self to the possibilities that are in me. For in me now there is the excitement of expectancy. I expect only the good to happen because you are good, my God. You are the greater self in me being made manifest in my life. I now have the ability to respond to you and to my life in new, creative, expanding and exciting ways. I am grateful for my life, for all of the good in my life, for its many lessons and the growth that I have received from them. My many blessings, my loved ones, and for all of the opportunities and possibilities that are mine. I say thank you, God. Thank you. Thank you. Amen. And now let us join together as we sing and pray the Lord's Prayer. Our Father, which art in heaven, hallowed be Our debtors and 
And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom and the power and the glory. Other things just make you swear and curse. When you're chewing on life's gristle, don't grumble, give a whistle. And this'll help things turn out for the best. And always look on the bright side of life. Always look on the bright side of life. If life seems jolly rotten, there's something you've forgotten. And that's to laugh and smile and dance and sing. When you're feeling in the dumps, don't be silly chumps. Just purse your lips and whistle, that's the thing. And always look on the bright side of life. <whistles> always look on the bright side of life. For life is quite absurd, and death's the final word. You must always face the curtain with a bow. Forget about your sin, and give the audience a grin. Enjoy it, it's your last chance anyhow. And always look on the bright side of life. Always look on the bright side of life. For life is quite absurd, and death's the final word. You must always face the curtain with a bow. Forget about your sin, and give the audience a grin. Give the audience the grin they love, and always look on the bright side of life. <whistles> always look on the bright side of life. Side of life, side of life, side of life. Nancy, that was wonderful. Love your singing and your whistling is absolutely amazing. Many persons deal with issues in a way that just doesn't work. Meaning some of us experience life as a series of problems in need of being solved. So we focus on our rational thinking as we seek to solve problems in the fastest and most effective way. When we do, it's easy to become engaged in an intellectual battle within ourselves that pulls us down. We could instead allow ourselves to operate in a no problem mode, experiencing life as the presence we are there to absorb, whatever it means. And while dealing with it, allow it to be and not feel that we need to change it. A king said he wanted to wear the shirt of the happiest man in the kingdom. So he sent his people out and they did find the man who was the happiest person in the kingdom. But he owned no shirt. You see, he didn't know that it was a problem. If we don't know it's a problem, it's not a problem. It's only a problem when we give it the 
mental construct that says it's a problem. We can look back on every situation in our life and see that it is not a problem, but rather a situation for our learning and growth. Living in this way is the first step to happiness. It leads us to humility, to living in the flow. It helps us be in the present. We can live from a place of no problem. As we continue to do our best at every turn, when we see life, in a no problem mode, our entire, entire mental focus shifts to one that is hopeful. The message of Jesus was always hopeful. He said, it is God's good pleasure to give you the kingdom. You are the light of the world. The kingdom of heaven is within you. I have come that you might have joy and have it abundantly. A woman had a tumor in her cheek and the surgeon had to, in order to remove the tumor, cut a nerve that controlled how her mouth was formed. And as a result, afterwards, she had a smile that some people might call clownish. And as she was in her hospital bed, she said to the surgeon, will it always be this way? And he said, I'm afraid it will. Well, her husband was standing at the side of the bed. And he said, I think it's kind of cute. I kind of like it that way. And he made a face with his lips in the shape of her smile and gave her a kiss. And that changed her entire perspective. There was a movie a few years back called The Best Exotic Marigold Hotel. It's a delightful movie. I highly recommend it. But in that, one of the primary characters with some frequency states, everything will be all right in the end. So if it's not all right, it's not yet the end. In order to have a harmonious life, it's important you not allow yourself to be upset when things don't go the way you would prefer. Embracing three special attributes will go a long way, way toward bringing this about. First, is to live with a spirit of acceptance. This means not requiring others to share your opinions or beliefs about what to think or to do. You can allow others to be themselves. And unless what they're about is harmful, just let them be even though what they may believe or do is different from what you would choose, you don't try to change them. You may not approve of their views or behaviors, but you don't consider it your mission to change them or even to point it out to them. Jesus was a great champion of not judging. In Matthew 7, he is quoted, judge not that you be not judged. The second attribute is non-resistance. While non-resistance is related to acceptance, there is a subtle difference that is important. With acceptance, your focus is on something outside yourself. You're accepting another person, their opinions, 
or behaviors. Non-resistance is being at peace within ourselves, no matter what the circumstances are around us. There was a woman a century ago who took her young son who was taking piano lessons to a Paderewski concert. And they got front row seats. And she was sitting there with her son and she noticed a friend a little ways off and she went over to greet that friend. Well, while she was gone, her son decided to explore a little bit and he found a door that said no admittance. He couldn't resist it. Well, before long, the lights went on and the concert was about to begin. And the people saw this giant Steinway piano in the center of the stage. But here was this little boy sitting at the piano and very much focused on it and playing Twinkle Twinkle Little Star. Well, all of a sudden, some people said, get that kid out of here. What does he think he's doing? Well, Paderewski was off in the wings and he heard this and he went out there behind the little boy and said to him, keep playing, don't stop. And with his left hand, he started doing a bass part to compliment it. And on the right hand, an obligato. And it went on with the two of them just making this beautiful music. And it was the thing that the people in the audience most remembered about that evening. Jesus had a lot to say about non-resistance. In Matthew 5, he said, if someone strikes you on one cheek, turn the other. And if someone sues for your coat, give them your cloak as well. And if someone forces you to go one mile, go two. Now, the key to understanding Jesus' message is about not taking non-resistance literally. You see, Jesus does not tell us to just be a doormat for other people. Remember, Jesus spoke metaphorically. Jesus is telling us to be at ease with life. As you choose not to resist life, you move into an easy way of living where synchronicity abounds, aches and pains diminish, stress melts away, creativity flourishes, and relationships heal. The serenity of your being is even reflected in your daily activities, which will seem to flow more freely. When you have no expectation that something should be a certain way or someone should believe or do a certain thing, you've achieved an enormous measure of freedom. And the truth is, if you not achieve this, it is because your ego is still in charge. This is a sure sign that you've not committed yourself to your higher mind. In simple terms, you've not committed yourself to God. One sign that you have committed yourself to God is when you know that no matter what, good reigns supreme, that order reigns supreme. Because when you observe wrong in this world, gun violence, war, conflict, injustice, economic inequality, whatever, you know that in time, it will work out the arc of the universe moves toward justice, as Dr. King said. You know that in time, 
it will work toward resolution. Hope is alive within you. And when you observe evil actions by a person, you know with certainty that over time, though it may be many lifetimes, the soul of that person will evolve. So the first step to harmony is living with acceptance. And the second step is non-resistance. The third attribute is forgiveness. And it's not only that you reviewed every person and incident in your past and are clear that you hold no ill will toward anyone for anything. That is vital. But you also have a forgiving heart that is prepared to forgive you know that incident, incidents will arise. Someone will pull in front of you in traffic. A loved one will say the wrong thing. These things happen. And you'll be prepared to let it go so you don't carry with you any resentment or negativity toward any person. You may recall that the disciple, disciple Peter had a history of not forgiving fully. But something happened that was amazing to Peter at a time after Jesus was no longer present. King Herod continued with violence against the leaders of the church. He had Peter arrested, intending to have him killed. And then from Acts 12. So Peter was kept in prison, but earnest prayer for him was made to God by the church. The very night when Herod was about to bring him out to be killed, Peter was sleeping between two soldiers bound with two chains and sentries before the door were guarding the prison. And behold, an angel of the Lord appeared and a light shone in the cell. And he struck Peter on the side and woke him saying, get up quickly. And the chains fell off his hands. And the angel said to him, dress yourself and put on your sandals. And he did so. And he said to him, wrap, wrap your mantle around you. In other words, wrap yourself in your spiritual consciousness and follow me. And Peter went out and followed him. He did not know that what was done by the angel was real, but thought he was seeing a vision. When they had passed the first and the second guard, they came to the iron gate leading into the city. It opened to them of its own accord. And they went out and passed on through the street. And immediately the angel left him. And Peter came to himself and said, now I am sure that the Lord has sent his angel and rescued me. Whatever our role in life, once forgiveness opens the door, we're able to hear the voice of angels in the form of divine ideas guiding us. Our mind becomes a clear channel to the one mind providing us access to all wisdom and understanding, allowing any chains of resentment or bitterness to fall away, permitting our every need to be directed by the perfect path that God has prepared for us. So you choose to live in a no problem world and you decide to live in harmony and when you do this, this is your experience.
to live in a no problem world and you decide to live in harmony, accepting life around you, practicing non-resistance and a spirit of forgiveness. One other attribute is key. You see that doing all of this is vital, but requires one further step to feel the love for every person. A love that aligns with your fundamental love for all of life, for its creator, a love for God. With this, you truly move into the divine realm of oneness with all of life. Will you pray with me? Dear God, we are so grateful for your presence and power alive within us, always guiding us, always allowing us to move in the direction of our greater good. And so it is. Amen. And before we move into the love offering, we would like to ask that if there are a couple of volunteers who would be willing to help us out, we have a couple of mailings between now and Christmas. The first one starts this next week. Mailings that we'd like to send to everyone in the church. And if a couple of people would be willing to receive from us the envelopes and the items that are to be stuffed within and to address the envelopes, we'll provide the stamps uh, and get this all to you and then pick it up before you seal it and uh, we'll take care of that. But if there are a couple people, if you could let us know, we would be most grateful. And now let us move ahead into our love offering prayer. Divine love through me blesses and multiplies all that I have, all that I give and all that I receive. And if you are willing to provide the church financial support, we are so very grateful to those persons who are maintaining their financial support, allowing the, the ministry to continue forward. There are three ways that you may give. The first is through online giving, through our secure website, www 
slctroy.com forward slash give. The second is by sending a mail, uh, a ma to mail a check or money order to 41340 Fox Run Road, number 106, Novi, Michigan, 48377. Or you can give a call to my cell phone number with a one-time donation on your credit card, secured 248-925-6214. And we would be so very grateful. Now, we would also like to welcome anyone who is joining us for the first time today and invite you to join our email list uh, by visiting our website, www.slctroy.com, and then going up to the upper right-hand corner where it states join email list. And this will allow us to keep you informed of events happening here at Spiritual Life Center. We would also invite you to let us know of any prayer requests that you have. And if you get those to them, us by today, we will have these included on what goes out tonight to our prayer team. It will also be sent forward to Silent Unity. Uh, you can send those requests to Ronald F. Scott at gmail.com or send it to the phone 248-925-6214. And you can also call for one-on-one -on -one prayer with Silent Unity around the clock, 24-7, on their prayer line, 1-800-NOW-PRAY. We also have this exciting month of auctioning the quilt that was made for us by a professional quilter, a friend of ours from Texas. And she has wanted to support Spiritual Life Center, so she prepared this beautiful quilt um, that's being auctioned during this month of November. Its vivid colors are striking. It's 45, 40 by 50 inches, looks great, lying on a surface or mounted. The logistics don't make a raffle possible because of ticket, ticket sales just aren't practical. So the auction began this last week and uh, we're delighted to let you know that the winning bid at this point is $500. If you would like to increase from there in increments of $25, please give us a call or email us and we will continue this through the end of November, November 29th for the final bidder winning at that time. We'll keep you informed. And finally, we would like to invite you to our Zoom coffee hour at 11 o'clock or immediately following the service you should have received an email with a new link for this time of connection. If not, please contact us and we will get that information to you. And now, please join us in our peace song and benediction.
now as you go forth, know that the light of God surrounds you, the love of God enfolds you. The Lord bless thee and keep thee. The power of God protects you. The Lord make his face to shine upon thee and be gracious unto thee. The presence of God watches over you. The Lord lift up his countenance upon thee and grant thee peace. Wherever you are, God is. Amen. Amen. Go your way rejoicing. All is truly well.